Gunderson produced the Multimax in 2013 to provide a better option for automobile transportation. The design is based off former fully enclosed auto racks but have smaller, more fine perforations in the side panels to protect against graffiti vandalism. Another design feature is the ability to adjust the number of decks from 2 to 3 or vice versa. Bi-level auto racks are intended to carry taller vehicles, such as SUVs or vans, while tri-level auto racks have an additional deck to handle shorter in height standard or compact automobiles in the same given space. Multimax features the ability for railroad car shops to change the car configuration from bi-level to tri-level or vice versa as traffic patterns demand. With several thousand auto racks built for nearly all the Class 1 railroads, the Gunderson Multimax auto rack has been a very popular design for the 2010s. Scale Trains announced this model at TrainFest 2019 and was finally delivered in August of 2020. I purchased four schemes, the white KCS version, UP version, BNSF tri-level, and the model we'll be taking a look at today, the white BNSF paint scheme. Over here on the A end, we'll do a brief overview of the details found on this side of the car. Up here at the top, we do have the upper door guide, as well as you can tell the excess height portions of the car are painted this nice yellow. We have nice rivet details all along the side of the car. We do have the door rods separately applied, left and right. We do have the silver metallic paint over here on the door ends, very nicely done. Nicely done, finely printed details along the sides. We do have the drop steps right here, as long as the drop end grab irons. We have the coupler cut lever bracket, as well as the coupler cut lever. We do have the die cast metal scale knuckle coupler, as well as the train line air hose with the silver painted tips. Next, we'll go ahead and take a look at the side of the car. Starting over here to the left, we do have these drop style grab irons, as well as the side ladders. You can just barely see that train line air hose sneaking through right there at the bottom. We have a lot of great rivet detail, as well as the jacking pad. And then we do have a stamped defect card holder right here, very nicely done. And then kind of the main selling point of these cars are these etched metal side panels. And you can just see very nicely done, very, very fine, intricately done, perforated holes. Just sneaking down, you can see the ACF low deck swing motion trucks with the 110 wheels. You can just barely see they do have the spinning bearing caps along with the road name and number printed on the actual truck body. Moving down, we do have the safety striping as well as the road name and number. And we do have all these nicely done panels. This last main panel does have the BNSF logo on a non-perforated panel right here, as well as we can see the brake cylinder assembly, as well as the brake chain, going to the brake rod chain, to another chain over here. And move down to the end of the car and we do have the, the brake lever over here, as well as another side letter and another drop down grab iron. Looking at the top of the car, we can see some of the other details we had mentioned earlier, kind of those door guides, as well as the door rods. The actual roof of the car is painted in a nice silver metallic and does have rivet detail throughout the entire top of the car. With the car flipped over, we do get a better view of the details we normally don't see when the car is rolling down the tracks. We get a better view of the coupler cut lever as well as the train line air hoses. Do get a better look at the truck as well as the brake bracket. You can see the roller bangs as well. We do have the alpha side of the brake brackets. Moving the car down. We do have the air reservoir as well as the control valve. We have a lot of nicely done brackets and brake piping. And then moving the car over, we do have the air cylinder as well as the Bravo brake bracket. And then finally, we do have the coupler cut lever as well as the other train line air hoses. Checking the weight of this model, this auto rack is 12 and a quarter inches long. So by the NMRA, it should be 7.12 ounces. 
put it on the scale and it's 7.86 ounces or 223 grams, 22 grams. So we are gonna move on to the scoring of the Gunderson Multimax Auto Rack. Throw up the rubric. First things first is the packaging. Standard scale trains packaging looks pretty good. For the accuracy, I could not find an exact photo of the road number I had modeled, but based on similarly numbered prototypes, the paint and safety striping and all that was very similar. The paint on the model overall looked really good, had nice sharp lines, printing was legible and sharp. There was a few issues on several of the models where the printed numbers and letters were scuffed. It looks like they were damaged, so I don't know if there was an issue with the printing or the painting process, but just on a number of the models, I had an issue with that, so I did take away one point. Overall, in the details, a good number of separately applied details. They were executed very well, and there was not a lot of molded on details. I really couldn't find any issues with the details, so it's a full 30 points. Couplers, trucks, and wheels, they had the correct ASF low ride trucks with the roller bearing caps and the road name number printed on. However, on a few of the models, there were low couplers, so I did take away one point for that. On the specific model, the AN was low. Operations overall pretty good. Metal couplers, metal wheels for good performance. Nice height and meets NMRA standards. The model does have limitations, but Scale Trains is very clear on what the size and the minimum radius is, so just make sure that is adequate for your layout before you purchase one. The value overall really good. I gave it a 10 out of 10. Nice premium details. The details match the price point very well. And then miscellaneous. It's a great example of a modern auto rack and it looks good, matches the prototype, but they could have done a little bit better on some of the smaller details like the paint scuffs and other manufacturers with their Multimax models did a little bit better on like the coupler cut levers and the draft boxes. When you add up all the points, that is a 97 out of 100, taking away the three points for the paint, couplers, trucks, and wheels, and just the overall miscellaneous values. And when you tally it up and compare it to other models I've done in the past, that puts it tied for a second, along with Rapido USRA DS one box car and second out of 16 models. So just some final thoughts on the model. Overall, I think Scale Trains did a, once again, amazing job on this model producing it, and it looks great out of the box, runs really well, and just overall, they did an amazing job, especially on this first run model. And I can't wait for the second run. Hopefully, they're gonna be adding more road names, more road numbers. We have a variety to choose from from right now. We have a total of 48 road numbers to choose from, but we can always add more. And I think if they just do a little minor tweaks, minor improvements. This car is going to be amazing and it's no doubt going to be a 100 on that second run. Tell me what you guys think about the model. If you guys are going to pick some up on this run or if you're going to wait for the second run maybe, but leave a comment down below on your thoughts or opinions on the actual review and we'll leave you with a nice run by shot. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.